Hello and welcome to Yesteryear's Mac Games, where today we're strapping two flat surfaces of carbon fibre to our feet and throwing ourselves down a mountain. Today's subject of interest is Ski 3D, a competent software rendered time trial skiing game that was released as shareware by Safara Arts in 1999. And while not necessarily the most popular old ski sim for the classic Mac OS, that would probably be Mac Ski. It's easy to pick up nature, catchy tune, and replay ghosts that represent the player's best times make it a pretty enjoyable title to pick up and play. One doesn't really need to be that good at the game to enjoy it, as unless they let someone else have a go, a player will only be racing themselves. Instead of AI skiers, Ski 3D remembers exactly where the player went, what they bumped into, and the duration of the run. So despite there being no competition, it actually gets quite competitive indeed. Ghosts aren't an uncommon thing to include in a time trial game. Thinking about it, Dirt Bike had them too. Courses are comprised of hills, trees, a few signs, slalom poles, a chairlift which is a nice touch, and the boundaries down the side. Perhaps not the most varied selection of objects, but I'd say the elevation in this 3D space is the key element to each course's character, from the simpler faster runs to deep caverns, annoying pits mogul fields that are pretty much impossible to exert any control over, and fantastic long jumps to fly off. Depending on the length of the course, runs can take as little as 20 seconds, although a bad run down a longer course can take over a minute. This is still pretty quick, but there's practically no cooldown between finishing and starting again, so screwing up isn't that big of a deal. The worst part of making a bunch of mistakes in a racing game like this is having to stew in the failure while traversing menus to restart and then sitting through a loading bar. Controls couldn't be simpler. Left, right, up to go faster with lower manoeuvrability, and space to enhance cornering by sacrificing speed. With these mastered, the first order of business is to simply get down the hill. There's no point trying anything fancy until a rudimentary understanding of the course has been picked up. Run by run, I was able to correct mistakes, such as missing the slalom posts, which is a five second penalty, getting stuck down a hole, shooting off a jump at the wrong angle, going an inefficient route, and slamming into trees, which the skier recovers from impressively fast. I did this in real life once. It took a lot longer. I was able to refine my run bit by bit with the added entertainment of occasionally watching past mistakes. The sight of the player and some ghosts all launching off the same jump is pretty great, although their presence is a drain on processing power. The game suggests a G3 as the minimum spec, but even though I'm playing on a 1GHz tiebook with new thermal paste, three ghosts still result in a fallen frame rate. Not enough to affect gameplay, and definitely not enough to cause me to turn them off, but it's noticeable. The ghosts are the key motivator for improving a score, and it's really satisfying to tackle a corner better and cruise past them, albeit quite disappointing if too much speed is taken into the next one, whereby the skier wipes out and is repassed. I found some courses, like pits here, required a very different style of control to normal. It was easier to avoid the numerous trees with slight taps to the controls, instead of trying to plot a route through the emptier sections with more elaborate changes in direction. I wondered why my first run was heaps better than anything else I could manage afterwards, before eventually figuring it was because I was being exploratory and not pressing the controls a great deal. There's about 12 pre-made courses in all, and they all do something different. To expand on this, an editor is provided, where a user can affect everything there is to affect in order to make their own. Sometimes a cache of user-made stages for a game will appear online, but there doesn't seem to be one for Ski 3D. Perhaps that's because the editor was a bit fiddly to use, and I think a key reason for this was due to having to guess, without any visual aids, as to what sort of speed a skier was likely to be going at any one point. Setting the correct amount of inclination for each bit of track can therefore become a real pain. As far as editors of the era go, however, it's not bad. So, listing a bunch of features that could have improved the game always feels a bit redundant when looking at legacy shareware titles. I mean, Ski 3D isn't trying to be a feature-rich retail title made by a team of people like, say, SSX. It picked its focus and made it enjoyable, and that's all I can really ask for titles like this. I could say that more ghosts at any one time would be neat, but then again, that could really knack a performance. Perhaps a free cam mode, where the user doesn't actually race, but instead watches the ghosts go down the hill at whatever angle they choose. Ultimately, however, I'd say Ski 3D is absolutely fine with the features it has. It's fun, and the classic Mac OS doesn't really have anything else like it. It's worth trying, and is confirmed to run quite well on the Sheep Shaver emulator, so it should be quite accessible to those interested. I've stuck my best times in the description for those that fancy a target to beat, so hit me up with your times if you decide to try and best them. For more content on old Mac games, check out some of my other videos. 
and be sure to connect through the comments and the Twitter with your thoughts, memories and fastest runs. Subscribing to YY's MG will keep you on top of future content, so that's definitely a good idea. Thanks for watching then, and see you next time.